What's up guys? Today I'm doing a video on a Smith & Wesson, <laughs> at least that's what it says on the gun. It's a Smith & Wesson chambered in 38 Smith & Wesson. Now this gun has some problems with it and I'm not sure how well you're going to see it on camera, but when you cock the hammer, it doesn't quite churn completely and you have to help it. I don't know if you can see that on my, my camera. So I'm gonna have my cameraman zoom in on just the gun real quick. All right. Okay, we're on the gun. And so when you cock it, it's just ever so slightly off. And it's the same with double action trigger. See? So this gun is not safe to shoot in my opinion. The timing is just a little bit off. So that's why we have it in the vise. Now I got a couple 38 Smith & Wesson bullets that I found in a bag of other bullets. You don't ever want to shoot that ammo because you don't know if it's been reloaded. Uh, Keith, if you want to zoom in on the bullet. But I, this could be reloads. Okay. And there's the bottom. But um, I don't know how this was loaded. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> so if you get one of these in something like this, don't shoot it, it's not worth it. But we're gonna shoot it now because we have it in a vise and we're gonna see how these two bullets, I got two of them. I also found out that it will somewhat chamber a 223 round. Now the only problem is it will go into the, uh, the actual action. It will go in. But the problem is, is when this strikes it, it pushes it further into the barrel and then it has a light primer strike. We found by putting a wedge inside the cylinder gap up here, I actually held it in place enough that we were able to get just the primer to go off on a uh, uh, unloaded cartridge. So we're gonna try that and see what a 223 round will do to a gun that was not designed for it. And obviously we're not complete idiots. We have a string that we're gonna put around the trigger and run like hell. So, we also have some lottery tickets donated by Lude69.com. Uh, hopefully we'll hit it, I'm not 100%, but we're gonna show you with the 38 Smith & Wesson, the ballistics, because it's a very- Anemic. Anemic, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Anemic round. And we're gonna show you how anemic, maybe we'll just pull it closer. Cool. So, we got a little bit of unburnt powder here around the front. Not too bad. We will use a high-tech stick. <laughs> Bolt went in that deep. So, for anybody that ever uh, gets a few old ladies shooting yeah, yeah, with a 38 Smith & Wesson, hide behind a roll of lottery paper. Who's about to blow up? Oh. And looks like the casing's fine. And the gun's fine. Take a 223, and we put it in here. By the way, this gun is a 38 Smith & Wesson. But if we take just a piece of shotgun shell, a little sliver, slide it into the barrel gap, <laughs> cylinder gap, When we slide the 223 in, it essentially jams it just enough so it'll work. And that was terrifying. That was terrifying, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I'm essentially holding a bomb in my hand at the moment. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> I don't... Just put it in the vise. Put it in the vise, man. Yeah, put it in the vise, but uh, still have to stick in the way. Just uh, remember, boys and girls, don't try this at home. Yeah. Oh my God, my heart skipped a beat with that. <laughs> I swear, doctor, I got my arrhythmia from Keith. <laughs> If you can't see why this is a bad idea, you're blind. Oh my I'm going to try redoing the string, too. Oh, my God. 
I don't like this. <laughs> a safety stick back in. I don't think that's gonna do much, Keith. I hate All it needs to do is just keep the hammer from dropping. I think it's just gonna snap and <clears throat> like still do whatever it was gonna do. Ah, it's a safety stick. Yeah, they don't market safety sticks for a reason, Keith. <laughs> oh my God. Let's get the string back. Let's try putting the string up over the top. Maybe that will <laughs> help not bind. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little bit more nervous about this one than the Branko. <laughs> All right, just cause this got a rifle round in it? I mean, the the Branko had a Tokarev round in it, but I don't know, this seems sketchier. More, more stupider? More stupider, yes. Well, we missed the paper. Yeah, well, surprise. the- Surprise, we're lucky to get it going. Uh, why the gun? The gun looks fine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, that sucked. What? All right. Well, that was less terrifying than I thought. All right. Open it. Let's see that casing. I told you we needed to square that. So, there's the press. The gun's fine. The double action actually works now. Like, I did clear it. I should probably show you that so you don't freak out. It is clear. But now, the double action trigger actually works. Like, everything, like, I don't even have to help it. But if you go single action, let's see here. It doesn't quite turn it enough. And sometimes, well, it's not doing it for me now, but sometimes you'll feel it, and you'll pull the trigger, and then it'll just push the trigger forward. So, yeah, um, the gun survived. The gun seems fine, other than it might need some new springs in it. But, yeah, the gun survived uh, 223. I, I can't believe it. But, you know, maybe this isn't a half bad gun. I don't know if you can see the markings on it, but um, yeah, uh, mechanically it seems okay, and if I fix the, the nickel plating, it might be fine. <laughs> Fascinating. Just blows my mind that there is no marks on this, no cracks, no stress fractures, nothing. The gun just seemed to take it. The brass looked a little deformed obviously, but the gun looks fine. I can't believe that. That shocks me. The only thing bad about this gun is that single action trigger that sometimes hangs up and the nickel plating's coming off of it.